I have now finished 67 verses of the Tao, and I've written 67 essays on when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And this isn't just a clever play on words here. This is a quantum truth. As my friend Deepak Chopra has often said to me, quantum physics is not only stranger than you think it is, it's stranger than you can think. So that if you look at your origination, the place that you came from, this thing that uh, Lao Tzu called the Tao, this great source that is everywhere. There is no place that it is not. And yet it is doing nothing. And yet it leaves nothing undone. If you go out and just go for a walk this afternoon when you get home, just look at the perfection of all that is. Just look at the clouds and look at the sky and look at the ocean and look at the trees and look at the leaves and even more important, look at the space between the leaves and look at the invisibleness and the perfection of how everything is. There's a constancy, if you will. And this constancy is always there. And your goal, my goal, in the time that I have with you here today is to convince you to go to a place within yourself where you can emulate that divine perfection which requires you to do nothing, which never uses force, which never pushes itself, which recognizes something. I'm gonna to read to you just one of the verses of the Tao and a little bit of what I wrote about it. And I seldom read to an audience because I don't like being read to myself. But I'm just gonna share a little bit of this. Here's what Lao Tzu said in verse 29. Do you think you can take over the universe and improve it? I do not believe it can be done. Everything under heaven is a sacred vessel and cannot be controlled. Trying to control leads to ruin. Trying to grasp, we lose. Allow your life to unfold naturally. Know that it too is a vessel of perfection. Just as you breathe in, breathe out. There is a time for being ahead, a time for being behind, a time for being in motion, a time for being at rest, a time for being vigorous, a time for being exhausted, a time for being safe, a time for being in danger. To the sage, all of life is a movement toward perfection. So what need has he for the excessive, the extravagant, or the extreme? There's a time for everything. Imagine if you knew this. If you really knew that what you were experiencing emotionally in your life was a part of what there is a time for, and that you're not really doing anything. Lao Tzu says it over and over again. You're not doing anything. You're being done. <laughs> you're being done right now. You're one of the 10,000 things. And it is all being done, all of it. Like I do yoga every morning, or almost every morning, five, six days a week, I do this 90-minute Bikram yoga, this hot yoga. And this has helped me so much with just that simple little thing, just remembering what it says in verse 29 of the Tao, that there are times when you're in the midst of yoga, when you have a position where you have to put this foot out and you have to turn this one down and you have to get down here like this and you have to take this arm and I'm going to do it. And you have to do that for 60 seconds in a 110 degree room. That's after doing many other postures as well. There was a time when I would do that and I'd be so exhausted and all I could think about was, when is this 60 seconds gonna be up? Oh my God, when are we gonna get through with this posture? When are we gonna get onto where I can lie down on the floor? And finally, and I began to realize as this thing 
This doing the Tao thing has really changed me dramatically. So that now when I'm in that position with one arm down and one arm up and it is exhausting and you're stretching and you've got your arm right next to your ear and you're holding on, that you say to yourself, there's a time for being exhausted and there's a time for rest. There's a time for things not to work out. Imagine if you knew that in the midst of uh, my working with my daughter, for example, when I see the struggle that she's going to, and I can stand back and say, there's a time. There's a time for her to experience this. And there's a time for her not to experience it. If you read Katie's life, you'll see that there was a time for deep depression. There was a time for fear. There was a time for anger and worry and despair, deep despair. And when you're in those things, if you could step outside of yourself and look at it and say, there's also a time for its opposite. As long as I'm incarnated into a physical world, there's a time for all of it. And as you do, you get to a new place in your life where you begin to look at all the things that are happening to you because you remember one of the most, verse 40 of the Tao says, it's all about returning. It's all about returning. Returning to what? Returning to the place from which you originated. The first nine months of your life, you lived inside of your mother's womb in water. And during those whole nine months, nobody could get in there and mess around with you. Nobody could get in there and, and get you to worry about anything. You didn't have sonograms that you'd look at and say, my God, I don't have a nose yet. What the hell's going on? I hope, I sure hope I get a nose. And you got into nose therapy and you worry about it. Over, so what if it doesn't happen? What? You don't do that. And all of a sudden, perfectly, it all unfolds in exactly the way it's going to unfold, independent of your opinion about it. You're not doing anything. Nothing is left undone. You're being done. You're being completed. And you were totally, completely at peace with it. You were surrendered to it. You allowed it. It wasn't a struggle. It wasn't a And then you popped out of there. And then you said, thank you, God. Thank you, Tao. Thank you, Source. We'll take over from here. <laughs> and that was the biggest mistake. <laughs> All of a sudden, you took over. And you edged God out. E-G-O. You edged God out. <laughs> and you took on an ego, didn't you? And what is an ego? It's just an idea. Just an idea about who you are. Instead of being a piece of God, a piece of the source, you decided, and those around you decided, that you were something different. And if you studied quantum physics, and you took the tiny little particle that began you, and you looked at, tried to find out where it came from and reduced it down to its tiniest sub, sub, subatomic properties, ultimately you would discover what Lao Tzu knew. <laughs> that it's the spirit that gives life, that you didn't come from a particle, that particles do not create particles, particles do not come from particles. Originally, all particles come from an energy, a field of energy that has no beginnings and no ends and no boundaries, and that's who you are. And returning back to that, and letting go of the idea that who you are is what you have, and who you are is who you control. I don't think there's any more all-pervasive theme in the Tao Te Ching than the idea of being a non-interferer. Do you, Stephen? I mean, isn't it? It's about not interfering, isn't it? It's about letting go. It's about allowing. It's about detaching. It's about disconnecting yourself from this belief that you are in charge of other people. I'm the father of eight children and the father of motivation. That's what they tell me, so I've got... 
And as this father of eight children, one of the things that I've recognized and what has made me, I think, a better parent, particularly even since I've been doing this, is my willingness to, I call it the bite your tongue verse of the Tao. Just hang back just for a second, just as you're about to interfere, just as you're about to lay it on and tell somebody else how they should be and what they should do and how they should do it, you step back and realize that what Khalil Gibran, the great Lebanese poet and writing in the prophet said was just a basic truth. Your children are not your children. They are the products of life's longing for itself. They come through you but not for you. And you step back and I can't even begin to tell you how freeing it is to realize that you don't have anything to do. You don't have anyone to control. You can be at peace. And I watch and I've become much more of an observer even, even on airplanes. I was in London five days ago. And I don't know if you've flown in, in and out of Heathrow lately, but uh, things have really changed. <laughs> you know, we couldn't take anything on the plane. The terrorists, whoever they are, are selling fear, and we respond with more fear. Every time you use force, you create a counterforce, and then another counterforce, and before you know, and the Tao teaches us all. I mean, one of the great lessons in the Tao is that any country that has its primary resources and its energy placed on building weapons is not of the Tao. And those countries that have their consciousness located in the Tao put their energy into tractors and building homes and growing food, not building weapons. I saw a movie not too long ago with uh, Nicolas Cage about uh, warlords or something, the lords of war, I think it was something like that. One of those alarming things about how much energy we are in the world creating energy to destroy ourselves. That we have literally created from our consciousness enough weaponry on this planet to eliminate all life within just a few moments. It's all there. It's all there for us. We've allowed ourselves to move so far away from the great teachings of the great spiritual masters and we believe that we're a Christian nation or that we're a spiritual nation when we find ourselves ha having moved away from these simple principles and then getting upset with other people because we can have these kind of weapons but they can't and we, we don't look hard enough at ourselves and all the ways that we have deflected ourselves from the greatest teachings of all of the great spiritual masters.